Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Pennsylvania Railroad F7 locomotive. I picked this uh, locomotive up in an eBay lot several months ago, and uh, it's in absolutely horrible condition. I don't know exactly what somebody did to this locomotive. I, th I think they must have, like, spilled some paint on it or something, because uh, the paintwork on it is just uh, really uh, quite a mess. And uh, you can see from, uh, like, this cracking in the shell, this engine's definitely had a rough go at it. And as I remember, this engine doesn't run. I think it actually was showing some signs of life last time we tested it, but uh, it's definitely going to need some help before it can be uh, riding the rails again. So we're going to try to do just that today. We'll see if we can get this thing kicking once again. I think it's actually got a decent drive in it, so uh, I'm kind of optimistic, but uh, there's only one way to find out. Anyway, let's take this thing over to the track. We'll uh, kind of try to test it out again, see if we can kind of diagnose exactly what's going on with it, and then we'll go from there and see if we can get it running. Let's begin. All right, let's see if she'll do anything. I think this thing did move a little bit, but uh, certainly is not gonna be a perfect runner. I can uh, pretty much guarantee you that. I'm giving it some power right now. Um, we can see the light is actually working a little bit. The light's actually on. Uh, it seems like the motor isn't getting power or something. Yeah, I don't know uh, what the situation with this engine is, but uh, something seems to be wrong with the drive. Uh, it's it's like it's trying to go, but it just uh, it won't. And uh, this whole light thing is a little bit concerning because we're not hearing anything from the motor, but the engine is clearly getting powered. So uh, yeah, there's clearly some kind of an electrical issue. I'd imagine probably with the brushes. So yeah, let's uh, bring this thing over to the workbench, crack it open and see if we can uh, get it kicking again. All right, let's begin here. We're gonna start by uh, trying to remove the shell. I think it just comes off like it does on pretty much every other brand of F unit by just pulling away at these uh, tabs right here. Um, yeah, it seems to be coming out. And uh, well, there we are inside. Look at that drive. I don't know exactly who this locomotive was made by. It looks to me like either a very early lifelike or a very late Varney, because uh, uh, Varney actually uh, is what created lifelike ultimately. So the very old lifelike locomotives are actually uh, late Varney engines. Uh, inside here, we can see, uh, first of all, we've got this weight, which uh, appears to be out of place. I think it's supposed to be uh, sitting like that. So uh, that could already be the source of some of our problems. Uh, but overall, um, let's have a look at all of this. Uh, see, this is out of place too. The trucks didn't feel like they were turning quite right, and you can see that there's this i suspect that's probably what what was preventing uh yeah okay so there's another problem uh, already fixed you know uh, this all seems to be it's turning okay but uh, i want to put some leads directly on the motor and see if we can uh, get it to turn over under its own power and then we'll uh, we'll go from there uh, if i were to take a guess could just be dirty brushes or could just be dried lubricant uh, preventing this thing from going or just oxidization on the commutator but uh, sometimes just putting a little bit of power uh, directly on the motor can uh, get it to fire up so let's uh, let's try this here i bet it will turn over if we uh yeah look at that oh this thing's trying to go well it was trying to go I don't know, these things can be a bit fickle sometimes. Okay, um, that's not a bad start. It's not running terribly fast. I mean, we're giving this thing full power right here, and it's not, uh... It's not going terribly quick. Yeah, okay, it's running. Uh, that's a really good sign, uh, but it's clearly not ready to go. First of all, I think we should take these brushes out and maybe uh, clean the commutator. And also, just with how this is turning, I'd imagine the lubricants in both these trucks have probably long gone bad. Uh, so we'll probably want to open both of those up and uh, sort them out as well. But uh, overall, hey, at least we know the motor uh, does actually run. It just needs uh, a little bit of help. 
I haven't seen this kind of design before, but it appears like you just kind of pinch those in. And, uh, well, there's half your drive. And you do the other thing on the other side. Uh, I can't say I dislike this design too much so far because uh, this makes it a lot easier to access these trucks. Now, I don't know how all of this comes apart. It looks like we may have some tabs right here, so it's quite possible that if we just uh, get a flatheads under both of these sides, we can kind of just unclip the cover and then uh, we'll be able to remove the wheels and everything else and change the oil inside here. Yep, that's it. So we just should, we should be able just to pull this out. Yeah, look at all that. So there's our gearbox. Doesn't appear like there's too much in the way of lubricant in there, so that just might be the problem. This thing just might be running dry, so that's not bad. Uh, the motor is turning quite well now, so that's good. Uh, we will crack this one open as well, though, because uh, there's it's likely the exact same problem, really. And uh, yeah, you can see we just get that clip out around that side there. Okay. Uh, lost a set of wheels. Yeah, just the same situation. This thing is just running dry. Well, I'll clean uh, these parts off a little bit, maybe with some alcohol just in case, but uh, just judging them uh, by uh, how clean they look, I think maybe this was just never given any oil, which is sort of concerning if that is the case, but uh, hey, at least, you know, it's not all like grimy or anything inside, so that's good. And uh, while we're in here, I'll take the opportunity to uh, give the uh, wheels a good cleaning too, because they'll just be a lot easier to access and everything. Uh, I mean, they don't look great, but you can see it really just doesn't even take that much with uh, this fiberglass pencil here to really kind of polish them up. Yeah, a little more work and those will be mint. Those contacts uh, are not actually looking too bad, but um, they could be better. So we're going to... Uh, just kind of try to just bend them up temporarily like this, and then we'll take a piece of one of those track cleaners and, and sort of clean up the metal a little bit. That's not looking too bad. So I had a really close look over this and I just really could not spot any signs that this was ever lubricated. Um, so I'm starting to wonder if this locomotive uh, was actually part of a kit and the person who put it together maybe just didn't know that uh, you're supposed to uh, oil these things up. Um, but in any case, uh, at least the gears aren't stripped. I guess this engine just never uh, really ran that much, uh, which saved its gearbox because if you run something like this without any oil, you're not going to be, uh, you're not going to have your gears very long. But uh, yeah, it uh, would, have, would have ironically uh, saved this engine. So, let's put a little bit of oil on there and uh, put some oil in each of these bearings. And then the uh, front truck will pretty much be ready to go. I've already got the uh, wheels all nice and clean there, as you can see. Uh, you can see there's a bit of an angle too on the uh, teeth of the gears. Let's we'll make sure that, yeah, it's all turning properly. Okay, that looks good. So let's just put this back on and then we'll uh, sort out the front one. Nice. I think I've made some mistakes. Let me just get this all sorted out and I'll show you what I think I've done wrong. All right, that looks, that looks good. So uh, you can see right here, conductive wheels, conductive wheels. So I wasn't paying enough attention. Now I have to open it back up again and sort those out. 
You see the contacts rubbing right up against tires. Terrible. I'm also pretty sure I forgot to lubricate uh, the little uh, ends of the drive shaft. Okay. All right, that's more like it. I think uh, this thing has got uh, a decent shot this time of actually running, so that's good. Let me just bring this back up here. We got that fixed now. Uh, well, uh, we got this out. I'm gonna try to remove these brushes right here and see if we can do anything to the commutator. It might not be that bad, but it really just won't hurt to have a look. got uh, the brush out. I found negotiating it around the commutator was a little bit difficult, but uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. We got it out anyway, so we'll just uh, give it a quick cleaning while we're in here. We'll make sure the gaps are also cleaned up because that can also cause problems. But overall, this motor looks to be in fine shape. I think it was just the lack of oil and everything else uh, that was really preventing this thing from going. So yeah, that's all right. Now let me just get a thing to clean out the gaps. Yeah, this whole thing really just doesn't seem that bad. I think we're I think we're okay to, to put the brush and everything back in. It looks like I somehow took the insulation off both sides of the uh, V-spring right here. Uh, I don't know exactly how I did that. They might have just been so brittle that they just cracked right off, but uh, either way, uh, those need to be replaced. It's pretty dumb, but uh, well, we'll sort it out. Got a heat shrink tube in here. All right, got that all back together. Had to solder those wires back on, but really not a big deal. I think uh, this thing is ready to go. I, I can't really think of anything else we could uh, do to it. So let's, uh, let's put the shell back on and bring it over to the track. I don't know if the plastic has just become brittle over the years, but I find this, something just doesn't seem quite right about, about it. Here it is all back together. Let's see if our efforts have paid off. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not good. Let's try turning it over manually so that will, oh, yep. Yeah. Hey, we got a runner. Well, at least it's moving. He's a runner. Well, it's not running too bad. I mean, uh, when we started, this thing was just about, uh, you know, there, there wasn't much happening. Now it's it's moving under its own power. Uh, it seems to be struggling a bit. I suspect that there's just still some dirty spots in the contacts, which maybe they're still sorting themselves out, but I mean, I'll call that a success. It's running. It's starting to pick up speed too, so that's good. Current draw, uh, about, what, about what you would probably expect for uh, an engine of its age, so uh, it's running pretty efficiently. It's starting to go pretty fast now, eh? All right. It's also turning well, which is good. The whole truck problem uh, seems to be uh, okay now. They've got those metal strips in place. 
Well, it's now a little while later and I've uh, let it sort of break in a little bit, let the lubricants move around, let the contacts uh, clean themselves up a little more, and uh, I don't think it's running too bad. It seems to be running uh, fairly consistently and uh, it's not stuttering too much. It does a little bit in a couple places, but uh, one thing uh, that uh, I forgot to mention is that uh, this engine only has four-wheel contact, so uh, even if it was in perfect condition, it's not going to run flawlessly. But uh, I think for, uh, you know, the condition we found it in, I really don't think that this is uh, too bad. So, yeah, overall, uh, very pleased with uh, how this thing turned out. Might not be uh, the best looking engine out there, but it's not a bad runner for, for what it is. Anyways, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.